Hi everyone, it's day four of my five minute book reviews and today I am talking about The Great Passage by Shion Miura. This is a novel that came out in Japan in 2011 and was translated into English I think last year by Juliet Winters Carpenter. I have a sort of hit or miss relationship with Japanese fiction, but this to me felt really, really familiar and really different in a lot of ways. And I will try to explain that as best as I can. So it felt different because it didn't have the dreaminess that a lot of Japanese fiction that I've read has. And I'm not just speaking about Haruki Murakami specifically, but I read a lot of Japanese fiction that to me has a dreamy detachedness to its writing and perhaps feels distanced to me because how many idiosyncrasies exist in the Japanese language that do not exist in English and cannot be translated. I considered being a Japanese translator once upon a time and I, I really can't fathom how difficult it, it must be to accurately capture a Japanese novel in English. This felt different to me because it didn't necessarily have that same detachedness and maybe it was just the method that uh, Juliet Winters Carpenter used but I really enjoyed the translation because to me it didn't feel translated in a way. Obviously I knew it was a Japanese novel and that it was translated but there was an ease to the prose that I really enjoyed and it just felt different to me and I don't know if I can even articulate what that difference was but I think this would appeal to readers who have struggled with Japanese fiction or translated fiction in the past because it felt distinctly different from a lot of the Japanese fiction that I've read. And the ease of the prose, I think, will eliminate major barriers to entry that people have with translated fiction. I'm just realizing now that I never explained what this book was about. Good job. This is a novel that is all about the construction of a dictionary. It takes place in a publishing house and follows a cast of characters that are all working to create the perfect Japanese dictionary. And at times it goes into extremely minute details about what it would be like to have to think about a dictionary in terms of what font do you choose? How do you represent certain things with images? How do you break down Japanese characters? What words do you choose to keep and what words do you choose to eliminate as time goes on and certain words and phrases come into use and others fall out of favor? And those were the most interesting parts to me, which is why I'm highlighting them first, because that to me was the delight of this book, was thinking about those little details. And this to me is a book for book lovers, but not in a way of like trying to romanticize a bookstore, which to me that romance is dead, but make you think more critically about how books are made and the work and time and effort that goes into making books. And maybe you haven't considered the dictionary, but it's the, the care and attention and time and, and thinking about all those little things that you might not have thought of before that made this book really special to me. But deeper down than just the construction of the dictionary, it also goes into a couple of different characters working on the dictionary, really focusing on one named Majime, whose name phonetically sounds like the word for serious or diligent, which is perfect for his character, but also brings up another problem that you have to think about when you're thinking about the Japanese language, which is that so many words sound identical and it's all about the character used um, that defines the meaning. And when you're talking, you can glean this from context and you'd probably assume that Majime meant diligent or serious. But when you see his name written down, it means wholesale dealer, which is just another complication that they have in Japanese that you wouldn't even consider in English because we do have homophones, but not in the way that they have them in Japanese. So we focus on Majime and it also falls into this very familiar stereotype of being nerdy and unattractive and lacking confidence. Um, and this to me is where it feel, felt very familiar. There's the idea of the kind of nerdy man. He falls in love with this beautiful, seemingly unattainable woman. Their relationship and their romance is also quite a big part of the plot in here, which is where the book lost me a little bit because I didn't find that stuff to be super interesting. And I've seen that story played out, especially in anime. It felt like a very familiar anime trope to me so many times that it wasn't uh, very exciting. I cared much more for the idiosyncrasies of the dictionary and much less for the actual characters, which is a bummer because I read books for characters. I say this all the time and I didn't feel connected to any of these characters, which always left me feeling at a distance with the novel. And the depth in here falls in the construction of the dictionary rather than the characters or the relationships between them. So for those reasons, I think this also would be a great book if you haven't read a lot of works in translation because it isn't trying to deal with a massive historical event or a really deeply philosophical idea. It's just a, a simple story about something that you probably take for granted. And it was completely enjoyable in that respect. Not my favorite thing that I've ever read, but I am glad to have read it and I really enjoyed it. And it did contain some beautiful little nuggets about our love of words and the importance of words and the importance of understanding our language. And so I'm gonna leave you with one of those quotes. 
A dictionary is a ship that crosses the sea of words, said Araki, with a sense that he was laying bare his innermost soul. People travel on it and gather the small points of light floating on the dark surface of the waves. They do this in order to tell someone their thoughts accurately, using the best possible words. Without dictionaries, all any of us could do is linger before the vastness of the deep.